Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Junko Edahiro from Japan. Um, I have been working in this sustainability field for um, 15, 16 years. Um, then I'm now focusing on um, the growth or the economic growth or well-being or sustainability um, as a whole or the resilience concept. Um, I'm very happy to have this opportunity to present what I have been thinking as the important issues for today, not only for Japan, but for the rest of the world. And I, I'm looking forward to the exchange of opinions and information with you so that I can learn from you, which I can bring back to Japan for many Japanese people. <laughs> so, if you don't mind, I believe you should start. Yes. Yes. So, no, so, yes. Okay. Thank you. David, please start. Okay. Here's the presentation. Okay. So, um, today I'd like to talk, um, first of all, the to proceed. Okay. Um, I have I have been working um, as kind of interface among sectors. I am not the specialist in the field of sustainability. My major at the college um, university was psychology, and the, I started my career as the interpreter or translator between English and Japanese. Um, during my years as working as translator and interpreter, I have met many wonderful people in the field of sustainability, like Lester Brown and Dennis Meadows and the Harmon Derry and the others. And they inspired me um, to get more involved in this field. So I quit it to work as translator and the, I started uh, to my own career to connect people in different areas, different sectors, different parts of the world, uh, so that they can exchange um, ideas and good practices or the concept or frameworks so that they can proceed their own initiatives in a more active, um, effective way. And the, so I have been working in this field um, to deal with, for example, climate change, biodiversity, um, and local environmental degradation, and so on. But what I found um, was that unless we address root causes of these problems, we have no chance to win over the battle for sustainability. And the, I think you share uh, what I have thinking, you know, the uh, root causes including uh, the ever-growing demand for Earth resources or the Earth sink capacity because of the ever-growing appetite for economic growth. So um, as you may know that um, Japan um, has been in a bad shape economically for 10, 20 years. Then four years ago, uh, we had, um, three years ago, we had the big earthquakes and nuclear power plant accident in Tokyo, uh, in Fukushima, um, in, in Japan. But still, um, the mainstream um, of Japanese people, government officials and the economic circles, industry leaders and general public are pursuing economic growth. They really believe that that is the key answer and solution to um, address many issues. But to me, um, this is not the right direction. And we have to think about um, how to create the alternative economy or alternative economic models or the alternative values for people to feel happiness and well-being. And I think um, this is why I started my own institute for studies in happiness, economy, and society. Um, about three years ago. And the, we have an um, English web page, so if you can come to our website, um, you can see the development in Japan. Um, and I have been um, interviewing uh, the many people in this field as well. 
and the so um this is the name of my institute um Institute for Studies in Happiness, Economy, and Society, um, we really believe that um, we have to think other ways um, than the pursuing infinite um, economic growth on the finite world or the earth. And the <clears throat> actually, um, there are many um, people and organizations and regions in Japan as well as in the rest of the world, are starting to search, uh, trying to find the alternative ways for happiness or the um, making profit, for example. And I am very impressed by the your government um, initiative, the transition, growth in transition. Um, I hope that you can teach our government to think that way, because the Japanese government do not have that kind of concept. So um, even now, they are targeting 3% annual economic growth, you know, uh, without thinking about the implication or the future prospect of that. So um, at my institute, we are doing many activities, although our institute is very small, um, only two people working on this um, institute. and but. We are doing researches and the publication of the books and writing articles and the doing uh, opinion polls uh, for people and the helping people to have dialogue and consensus building and others. And the one of the um, important tasks we are doing at our institute is to be a bridge between Japan and the rest of the world. Um, this is why we are a part of the um, uh, um, international Alliance, post-growth alliance, and uh, so we are receiving information uh, from the world. At the same time, we are dispatching information to the world. And the, I don't think I have to talk to you why we have to think about transition. Um, of course, global uh, warming and job growth. But let me talk some background, uh, especially um, of Japan, um, because we are facing sharply declining population with aging society. That is the issue. Um, this shows the population of Japan. <laughs> it's a kind of spike. Can you see it? So um, we have we had about 40 million people 100 years ago. Then now we have about 120 million. Then within 100 years we will have again 40 million. So 80 million decline is projected in a short time period of 100 years. So very short increase, sharp decline. So, you know, as you can see, it may be easy to have economic growth in this stage, but it may be, and it should be, very difficult to have the same kind of economic growth if you are decreasing such um, population. Could you please repeat the figure? Because, you know, 40, 40, 40 million, 40 million. And now 120, 120. And now we are going back to 40 million in 100 years. Pardon? Yes, peak of the population. Peak of the population is, yeah, 2000, I think 2005. So we are. The peak um, was 2005, less than two, 10 five. 2005. Mm -hmm. with, with 120 million? 120, uh, yeah. 100 or 200? 100. 100. 100. 100. Yes. Thank you. Actually, um, 
nowadays many people are talking about population decline in Japan, but um, you know the image of the people about population decline is not that kind of sharp. You know, people uh, have image of gradual decline, but but in fact we have very sharp decline. And the, of course, the government and industries are trying to um, trying to uh, reduce the decline ratio, but it doesn't Can work. Ask, uh, what is the present fertility rate in Japan? Now 1.34. Uh, and uh, this calculation is based uh, on the same fertility yes. rate or on a de still decreasing fertility rate? Um, I think the same. The, the same. Same. Okay. Same. Yes. Same. Yeah. And the, now the government is targeting to raise the fertility rate to 2.07, but it should be very difficult mm -hmm. to raise that um, high. And the, at the same time, of course, because of the population decline, but we are facing a very rapid aging uh, society. Um, sorry, this is in Japanese, but this is the percentage of the people over 50, uh, 65. So now we have about 25% of the people who are aged over 65. I think in Europe, the average um, number is about 20% or something like that. But in Japan, we have 25, and now we're hitting for 40%. 40%. <laughs> so now we have um, one out of four people who are aged over 65. And the, so if you come to the Tokyo Olympics in 2020, you will see many old people. <laughs> And we are having one out of three um, in 2035, and the, by 2060, two out of five will be over 65. So um, people are afraid um, of the, um, the burden on the younger generation to support senior people. Currently, 2.57 workers are supporting one senior person. But if the fertility rate um, remains unchanged, we have to have only 1.19 workers to support one senior people. So um, this means that um, the bigger burden on the young generation, which will um, you know, um, damage the, um, their how can I say, the energy to revitalize the economy. That is the, one of the biggest headaches of Japanese government. And so Japanese government is now trying to raise the fertility rate and uh, saying, you know, we are providing the, some assistance to the um, young people. But it seems to me that it doesn't work. Um, and the, this, this shows the, um, percentage of the people over 65 in the world. And this red line is Japan. We're heading for 40% um, in 2060. And here, um, the Italy, Sweden, Spain, German, French, um, UK, and the United States is this uh, orange line. And this is uh, the developing nations. So um, I think the Europe is like here, 20% below or um, about 20%. And there you're heading for 25 or in some cases uh, 30. But you know, Japan is far ahead <laughs> of the world. Um, so this is the situation. And the, there's a very shocking report um, which came out, I think just after you visit to Tokyo or during that visit. Um, Half of the municipalities in Japan is now regarded as municipalities at risk of vanishing. Um, the, the municipalities at risk of vanishing is defined as follows. Municipalities whose population of young women 
age 20 to 39 um, would decrease to less than half of the current level within 30 years. Because in Japan, 95% of the newly born babies are coming from this age group of women. So even if we can raise fertility late, but the number of the young women who can have um, babies are decreasing, um, this is not um, solved the issue. So now, um, about 50% of the uh, all municipalities in Japan, close to 900, are declared as municipalities at risk of burnishing. And the, there is a very uh, concrete example. One village in Japan is projected to have only eight women in this uh, young generation by 2040. So uh, now many municipalities who got this sentence are very um, hectic to organize committees, to take actions, to change this trend. So um, many people are thinking about or they're concerned about how to maintain functions um, of communities if we are having so many um, municipalities vanishing. And the, of course, the workforce is decreasing as well. And the, now our government is trying to change definition of working population. Now the working population is defined as the age um, between 20 to 65. But now they're trying to um, raise the bar to 74. So you have to work until 74 in Japan in this new definition. So, um, but if the birth rate remains unchanged, this newly defined working population aged um, between 20 to 74, well, um, it's now 90 million in Japan, but it will be 52 million by 2060, and by 2100, uh, only 26 million. So a huge drop in the number or the uh, size of the working population. But, but still, as I said before, the Japanese government is trying to keep the economic growth unchanged, 3% annual economic growth. That is what they are trying to achieve with this dim diminishing workforce. So I think this creates a huge stress because um, mainstream people are so obsessed to growth of course, the GDP is um, defined um, one by workforce size and the other um, as labor productivity. And the, we are trying to raise labor productivity. And we can, I think, um, improve to some extent. But it will be very difficult to catch up with the sharp workforce decline. So we have to expect Japan without growth although we would like to um, grow our economy for many people. And the, nowadays, um, people, media, um, are complaining about inaction of government for so-called lost 20 years um, in, in, in the period uh, of stagnation of the economy. But I believe that um, this is not lost 20 years. This 20 years is the normal. And the preceding one decade of bubble economy should be regarded as abnormality. But people are taking a different viewpoint. They believe that the bubble economy period is the norm. So we are complaining about lost 20 years. But I think we have to change that mindset. Sorry. And the I did an um, interview with Harman Derry in April when I went to the Washington, D.C. to celebrate Lester Brown's 80th anniversary. And the, now I'm working um, on the steady-state economy booklet in Japanese. I think the concept of steady-state economy, that is, of course, familiar with mm -hmm. 
familiar with you. And that is very important um, as one of the guiding principles for Japanese people and Japanese government. But uh, the concept of city-state economy is not well known in Japan. One, because of the um, translation or writing of Herman Derry's book is kind of difficult to understand. And two, the book is very heavy and bulky, and this is not for ordinary people. So I decided to create a small booklet on city-state economy. And with the help um, of Ham Derry, I'm now publishing the book. And actually, the Ham and Derry um, just got the award of Blue Planet Award. Um, have you know a Blue Planet Award? It's uh, one of the well-known awards in Japan. And the um, actually, the award is 50 million yen. So it's very big award. And the in the past, Lester Brown and the Dennis Meadows and others in the field of sustainability are um, getting that award. And this year, Haman Derry got that award. This, yeah, and he's coming to Japan to receive the award. <laughs> so um, I think this is a good opportunity for me to create um, the kind of introduction mm -hmm. of Haman Derry's work to Japanese people. And the, when I talked with Harman, uh, he said as follows, um, I would think that since Japan has been experiencing the failure of a growth-oriented economy, there might be interest in thinking in terms of adapting to the limits to growth and thereby experience limits as the success of a steady-state economy rather than the failure of a growth economy. And he also said, most of the pain experienced from limits may come from fighting against limits by striving for growth, rather than seeking good adjustment to limits and recognizing where growth, when growth is not worth the cost. So um, this is very important um, lessons to be learned by Japanese people and Japanese government. But as I said, um, the mainstream areas of Japan is still obsessed to the growth. Now they are trying to cut the labor cost, for example, in order to be profitable, to continue uh, the growth. Um, this is why unemployment ratio in Japan has been increasing, and we are also having an uh, increasing um, percentage of non-regular workers. That is very... Um, um, this is not the situation back in several um, years ago. I mean, Japan is known for <coughs> lifetime employment. So mm -hmm. there, there is a very strong loyalty um, among people who are working for the company because they are secured their long time, uh, lifetime employment. But the companies are changing their um, practices. Now they're decreasing the full-time workers to, replaced, um, to be replaced by the non-regular workers. Um, so, and the, at the same time, we are having many, um, for example, depression, suicide, and other mental problems due to the pressure still for growth. And the, we are having gaps, um, the, in many cases, um, decaying social capital, and the, I think we can call the social decline situation in Japan. And I will show some of the image. Uh, the, this is, is the increasing um, increase of non-regular workers. And the currently one out of three workers in Japan are non-regular workers. So in the past, almost all are regular, per, regular workers. So this shows the increase. And the, it will be increasing more, I'm afraid. And this shows um, the wage index. This blue line indicates the GDP. So GDP uh, went up and the flattened, but this is the wage index. In the past, we had very good index for wages, but in recent years, it went down. And again, the raising um, unemployment ratio, this is GDP, and the red line is unemployment. So we have many un unemployed persons. And the poverty ratio is also increasing. 
And the, the problem we have, uh, which is not that noticed, is the poverty of children. Now, one out of six children living in Japan is uh, regarded as children in poverty. Um, so this is not the situation. Uh, this is not a good situation, of course. And the Gini coefficient, coefficient is growing. So this means that the gap between haves and not haves. And the, this shows number of suicides. This is the total number. And this is men and women. And you can see very rapid increase here. This is the kind of um, structural changes the Japanese government implemented. They're shifting for neo um, um, classic uh, um, economic type of uh, measures. <laughs> so um, this is the increase. And now the local governments uh, and NGOs are trying to check the um, increase. So in recent years, it is becoming better. But still, we have high number of um, suicide. And this is the um, opinion poll who said, um, I'm satisfied with myself. And you can see Sweden, France, German, um, not Australia, but UK, US, Korea, and Japan. We have very uh, small number of people who said they're satisfied with, with themselves. And the same, um, the, I have bright hope for future. And in Japan, we have a smaller number of people who can have the bright future in the future. The, this shows the sense of happiness in Japan. This is per capita GDP in Japan. And this is the num percentage of people who said they are satisfied with their lives, they are happy. And the, this is typical um, paradox of happiness, of course. But um, in recent years, the, the gap between the two has been widening. So um, I'm very sorry to report that um, nowadays, um, if you come to Japan, you will not see many happy Japanese people. <laughs> I am happy Japanese people, but usually uh, the level of satisfaction and well-being or happiness has been decreasing. I think one of the reasons or root cause is, as I said before, the huge stress on people because we are having declining workforce and you know other limits to the growth. But still, the companies and governments are pushing for growth. So um, this is one of the problems. Now, I'd like to talk about um, transition. We have to think about transition, of course, and this is what you have been doing, uh, which I would like to learn more. But um, when I think about transition for Japan, I think economy-wise, uh, one direction is, of course, steady-state economy. And the other aspect is local economy. I will talk about more. And the some people are trying to have a new relationship between capitalists and workers. So um, in recent years, increasing number of workers' corps and the, are formed. And that is one direction. And the transition in values and lifestyle is also um, important. So the well-being or happiness-oriented society and the social capital and the, I will talk about this. <coughs> Last of all, um, towards the state, state economy, I think, um, first of all, we have to measure the carrying capacity. And then we can um, put the system to limit the harvest within that carrying capacity. And if you look at um, examples in Japan, we have some good examples, especially for fishery or forest management, that can be called steady stage practice, for example. Um, but th there are now isolated initiatives. So we have to have um, so we have to have the framework tools and the processes to create this steady state um, economy or steady state uh, practice. That is one thing we have to do. 
and the nowadays um, locally produced, locally uh, consumed food, very popular in Japan. Um, and the increasingly uh, locally produced, locally consumed energy is becoming popular. But uh, we have very strict and uh, the electric um, electricity market. So the electricity market reform is needed so that actually people can produce their own energy for their consumption. Now we cannot do that. We have to produce energy, for example, with PV, but we cannot um, give that um, power to the neighbors, for example. We have to use by ourselves or we can sell back to the utilities. So it's very diffi you know, difficult situation. So um, I think increasingly people are focusing on local economies. And the, in that regard, your country is one of the uh, best practices for us. And Gishin um, is very well known nowadays in Japan because one of the best-selling book, half million copies, um, is talking about local economy mm -hmm. and initiative. And in the first part of the book, um, they talked about Gishin. So many people know about Gishin. Mm -hmm. And the, so maybe next time I come to this place, this country, <laughs> I will um, visit the place to do some interview. And the, so locally produced food, locally consumed food, that is okay. But I think the next step would be more economic um, approach. For example, the local multipliers index, do you know, are you familiar with the concept? Um, you know, people are trying to um, um, bring money, for example, from the central government or other places to the region. That is very important, bringing in. That is important. But I think the similarly important uh, thing is to how to keep the money in the region. Yes. How to facilitate the circulation of the money within the region. And there is a tool called a Local Multipliers Index, which can calculate um, how many times you're calculating the money once put in your region. Mm -hmm. And the, actually, the um, New Economic Foundation um, in UK have that um, L M, Local Multipliers Index uh, system. Mm -hmm. And that is very good. And the, so I think this kind of um, scientific-based, economically uh, persuasive way of doing local economy is very important, especially for Japan nowadays. And the, at the point, um, we have to shift uh, from growth-oriented uh, society to well-being oriented society. In that regard, the, uh, the previous um, administration of Japan was about to announce happiness index for Japan. And they had tentative, um, actually, questionnaires. Um, but then the, uh, the current administration came in, and they canceled all the work. So there is no happiness index for Japan anymore. But um, if, you, if you look at the local level, um, more than 22 local governments are created, creating or using their own happiness index. So um, I think happiness or well-being um, things are taking place at local level, not national level. And the not only for the government, but for people, um, we are very, we have to have the lifestyle value changes. In that regard, um, I'm happy to report to you that um, if you come to Japan and to talk about um, these kind of things with general public, you can see a um, kind of trend toward this direction. And I usually use the three Ds to summarize what is going on in Japan. They are not featured, featured in the economic papers, but at the grassroots um, activities, you can see the 3D movement. 
First D is the ownership of one's living. So this means uh, shifting from owning to sharing. Um, that is um, going on in a strong way in Japan. And the second D is dematerialization of one's happiness. So in the past, many people believe that owning things or buying things, that brings you happiness. But now people are changing um, the source of happiness to um, relationship with people or relationship with nature. So um, I studied with my friends the candle night movement in which we are um, saying to the people that just turn off your power or computer or TV for two hours to enjoy yourself, to enjoy being mm -hmm. with your friends and the family. And the, we are doing this twice a year. And the, now there are many events going on with this candle night movement. And the, this is a Tokyo Tower. This is like the highest tower in the past. And the Tokyo Tower is also uh, joining us to turn off their light for this two hour candle night. And people are gathering here to count down the turning of the light. And this is another example of candle night. Um, there, is a, there was a small river running in the city, but the river was covered by the you know, road. So people were putting the candles to memorize the flow of the river. You know, this kind of movement is going on. And the, the third and last D is the vitalization of your life. And there is a um, movement among young people called half farmer, half X. This means that um, you're using your half of your time for growing food for your family so that you don't have to work so hard to get money to buy food. Mm -hmm. Then you can use the rest of the time to do whatever you wish to do. And the X means mission. So we have many half farmer, half writer, half farmer, half NGO members. And this kind of young people are increasing. And the, this is a kind of um, movement uh, shifting, from away, shifting away from money obsessed lifestyle. And the, this kind of movement is uh, well received among young people. And the, talking about transition, last year I'd like to talk about, especially for Japanese people, um, shift toward renewed tradition. And the, we have Edo period in Japan, um, this uh, 16th to 18th century, um, for 265 years. And during this Edo period, um, Japan was close to the world. So isolation policy was there. So there is no um, material flow back in holes and the energy flow back in holes. So we sustained ourselves by ourselves uh, without depending on overseas. It's a big difference. Nowadays, Japan um, is importing 60% of food from outside, and we're exporting, uh, we're importing 96% uh, of the energy. So the energy self-sufficiency rate in Japan is only 4%, and food self-sufficiency rate in Japan is only 40%. So we are totally dependent on outside of the world. Excuse me, the actual with the uh, economic uh, accident in Fukushima? Um, I think before it was Japan. Before. 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 I, 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 yeah, actually, there is no change. Yeah, we are importing uranium. uranium. Yeah. So before and after Fukushima, there is no change because we are importing uranium. Now we are importing fossil fuel to make energy. up energy. Not only power. Yeah, energy. 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 Ninety-six percent of energy is imported, which means not only electricity but all the yes. energy. Yes. Thank you. Fuel. Yeah, fuel. Yeah, fuel. Yeah. 
And during this ill period, we had we had a very peaceful time, almost no domestic conflict. And the, during that time, we had very stable population at some 30 million. Mm -hmm. And the, there is a very interesting research. And mm -hmm. the, the professor said that estimated annual economic growth rate during the, pe the period is about 0.4%. And during that time, the uh, people's um, life with about 40 years or 60, uh, 45, 40, 40 or 45 years. So during you, um, during one person's lifetime, he never feel the growth of economy because 0.4 percent annual ratio um, multiplied by 40 years it is nothing. So um, you can see we had in the past in Japan this stable, sustainable, steady state economy. So many people, not many, but some people are saying that we have to go back to that um, tradition. And of course, you know, now we have high technologies and different um, behaviors, but still, I think there is something we have to learn from our own um, past history. And during the Edo period, um, everything was reused and recycled, and there are many merchants who are doing recycle recycling activities. And there is a um, temple in Kyoto. Um, this is very interesting uh, washing hand uh, place, but this um, have the Chinese characters. And this means that um, I only know that I have enough. He who knows enough is enough will always have enough. That is the kind of value we had um, back in the period. So this value is called taruoshiru, that is Japanese, but it means I know I have enough. So maybe sufficiency in English would be a good word to uh, indicate this. So um, of course, in the period, uh, we had many problems. So I'm not saying that either Japan was the utopia, but um, at least I can say that um, during that Edo period, Japan sustained um, by itself and the peaceful way, and the many people who visited um, Japan during that time from Western countries said that um, Japan, Japanese people are very polite and cheerful, and the people are amazed how happy the Japanese people look during that time. So this is quite different uh, impression. I, I think you can um, say that, but so I hope that. Um, especially in Japan, because of the population decline and aging society and limit to growth in many um, ways. And I think we can have a smiling Japanese people again uh, when we can make uh, necessary transitions. So I majored in psychology and I like Jung very much. And he says that afternoon of its life and I think for sustainable society, especially in developed world, we have to live kind of the afternoon of life after ever growing morning. So in the period of ever growing, how to live, that is one thing. But if we are declining, um, how to live is a different thing. So we have to shift in that direction. That's what I have been thinking to present to you. And the as I said, um, I have a two website or the two activities. One is in Institution for Studies and Happiness, um, Economy and Society. And the other one is Japan for Sustainability. This is the um, communication platform uh, to dispatch information from Japan to the world in English. Um, the, we cover the broad sustainability field, which includes um, resilience, steady state economy, and climate change, energy, well-being, and others. And they, we have uh, the English website as well. So if you can come to this JFS English website, you will see more development to come in Japan. Thank you.
maybe we should start with uh, we could start with some questions. And I want uh, to inform you that we have five other uh, participants uh, in this mm -hmm. um, conference via the meeting room, Adobe meeting room we are uh, working with. And they uh, have asked, they, they ask some questions as well. So I, of course I would like to start with. Mm -hmm. By the way, the issue of migration policy of topic in China. Because when you showed the demographic, I, I, I would like to ask her what's about migration policy in Japan. What 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 you mean? Migration. Ah, migration. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, in the past, um, Japan has very strict um, um, regulation, and the the m number of people who are coming to Japan is very small, and because of the regulation and because of the culture. And we are not, um, we are a very homogeneous country. And the, for many people, it is still difficult to embrace uh, different people. So of course, we are having many workers from developing nations to help us. But um, not like um, in European nations. And nowadays, um, because of the declining workforce, uh, Japanese government is trying to um, expand the immigration. But in creating an uh, expansion-oriented uh, uh, measures at the government level is one thing, but um, how to facilitate coexistence with the people from other countries at local level, that is another thing. So, to your question, the immigration policy of Japanese government has been very strict, but now they're losing, uh, they're, they're expanding. But um, it may be difficult for Japan um, in the short term period to expand a um, huge number of immigrants because of the cultural differences. So that's not the possible solution for the population? <laughs> yeah, situation. actually the um, industry people are advocating um, many more immigrants and they had this calculation or this simulation saying that if we can receive 200,000 immigrants every year, mm -hmm. we can make up some of the um, crime, but in the end by 2030, I think, 20% of the workforce in Japan will be foreigners. And that is not acceptable for many Japanese people. So I think, and many other people think, immigrant policy cannot help, cannot solve the population decline issue. Even not if the alternative is uh, growth. I mean, I mean, it's always a question yeah. of how strong or how yeah. many are the problems. Yeah. Okay. You know, the current policy for at the Japanese government is to increase the um, retirement age to 74 or something like that, and the increase the workforce of women. Mm -hmm. And there is a notorious M shape in Japan mm -hmm. uh, for women's workers. Mm -hmm. um, after graduation of the university or the college, uh, they work, they get um, the job. But after marriage or after having babies, they quit working because of the, you know, many, many okay. reasons. Then after that, they start to work as temporary workers, part-timers. Uh, so this is notorious M shape. So um, the, what, is, what government is doing to, um, you know, reshape this, like you, like yours. So now the, uh, the current administration is focusing on many measures to help women to stay at job. That is one thing, mm -hmm. but it, it's a partial mm. solution. 
I think we have to think about how to decline in a smarter way. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, for many people, uh, growth is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And the you know, decline or decrease is a bad thing. It means stagnation or, you know. So how to change that mental model? Mm -hmm. That's the biggest challenge we're facing. What are the reasons for the predicted decline? How does it help? Uh, why will it? Why will the population decrease so intensively? What, what are the what are the, the reasons for it? For the prediction that people will um, Japan people will will getting smaller and smaller. Is that over aging? No? Yeah, but why? 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 So why do Japanese people get less children? That's the question. <laughs> is this the is, is this the, the birth rate? Is the only reason? Or are there other reasons in this prediction? Included. Long lifetime. Yeah, a combination. Yeah, long mm. life because we are expecting to have the average life for Japanese women over 90 and for men over 85 in 10 to 20 years. So um, that is good. I mean, you know, having the long life that is the blessing for humanity. But create the demographic, demographic um, challenge. And the I think the fertility rate, um, birth rate is the biggest problem. And the another problem, especially for the um, municipalities at risk of vanishing, they are losing their people because of the fewer baby born, but at the same time they are losing their people um, because of Tokyo. So people are going into Tokyo you know, for job or for whatever. And the, actually, the birth rate of Tokyo is far below the national average. Mm -hmm. So national average is 1.34 or something like that. And the Tokyo ratio, I think last year, is 1.09 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Because if you live in Tokyo, it's impossible to have babies. <laughs> There's no, you know, no room at your, room, uh, at your house or if you want to continue to work, um, you know, it's difficult to help and very expensive uh, for education. So I think the government should stop the inflow of people to Tokyo if they really wish to help birth rate or the um, population um, recovery. Okay. I would like uh, to inform you that uh, Franz Narada, who is uh, participating in the meeting, would like to uh, ask Yoko. Many questions. Uh, I was very surprised. Uh, I, I, I just learned about the presentation uh, uh, half an hour ago, but uh, I was very touched uh, by the uh, things I learned in this presentation. And of course, uh, the question uh, is very similar to, to what we are trying to achieve uh, to stop uh, the migration towards cities and to save uh, uh, rural areas, small municipalities, and give them a new rationale. And so I, I really, <coughs> I'm really looking out for models because there is one crucial element in this, and this is uh, this is people's uh, willingness to accept this life model. I think uh, what we see is still very much a kind of decision with a feet. Uh, uh, people, uh, uh, even if they have a, a, a house or a better quality of life, they they have to they have to go to large cities because of income uh, and uh, and survival reasons. So. Um, what we need actually is working models of small municipalities uh, that uh, that enact for visible for everybody uh, that there is a, a rationale uh, uh, 
uh, there is a, a, an operating mode that is producing uh, a high quality of life uh, for people. So if they compare, uh, it's not equivalent. It's not the same style of life, but it's something uh, which is equivalent in terms of it's, it's equally gratifying. So I, I, I would like to know if there are models in Japan that can serve as, uh, as um, anchor points for, for a, a transition model, uh, laboratories of the future, if you, if you like. And, uh, uh, and then I have a particular question. And uh, when, you, when you show this horrible slide of uh, the suicide leap, there was, uh, there was a, a very significant leap between 1997 and 1998. And, and I wanted to uh, understand what made this enormous uh, leap happen. That's for the beginning. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, thank you for the question. As for the um, good practices or the could be models in Japan, um, we ha we're having some good regions, um, some towns and villages working to that end. And the, there are some towns, especially um, there is a small town called Ama, Ama town in the, in the countryside. And they are doing very good job to raise their um, well-being um, level and attracting many people. So actually, the population of that town is increasing. That is very good. But at the same time, they are having people from other parts of Japan. So it's kind of zero-sum game. So um, not only counting the inflow of the people, um, we have to count the, for example, birth rate. That is another point. And the, if you, maybe next time you can, you come to Japan, you can go to Ama Town. And the Ama Town is an island town. So they're isolated, and they're easy. Um, to be independent if they would like. And they are using the local currencies, and that is very important and interesting. And the, there are many local currency movements in Japan, but a few are successful. Um, but Amatown um, initiative in local currency is successful mm -hmm. because nowadays people can use their local currency at every store in the town. Mm -hmm. And actually, the, how some portion of the uh, payment to the local government officials are paid by mm -hmm. local currency. So um, they're really trying to revitalize the local economy. Uh, so there are some good examples in Japan here and there, um, but um, not um, so how to expand and how to roll out that kind of model that is very important. And as for your question of suicide, the sharp increase um, during the <laughs> late years of 1990s, I, I have to check uh, the facts um, again. But what I understand is that um, during that time, um, the Japanese government and companies um, changed their uh, way of doing businesses, uh, shifting from, um, you know, uh, lifetime employment more competitive um, situation because of the global pressure to be competitive in the global market. Um, so I think, and at the same time, because we have had the light um, long employment system, uh, actually the government work is very limited to support people. They, don't, they didn't have to safeguard people because in the past, the companies are doing that job. But companies have been withdrawn their support to the people, and actually the government didn't enter uh, to pick their work. So there is a huge gap or the crack, so to speak, for people who are in need. So I think that is um, the biggest reason, one of the biggest reasons behind the sharp decline and the one of the biggest reasons why people especially in need are having huge problems nowadays uh, too thank you very much
I would like to ask Fritz to. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, yeah. Uh, oh. And I would like to make an announcement. Okay. Please. After okay. these questions, I would like to a short break. Yeah. Okay. And oh. then we. Okay. But Doris as well. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I, I'm wondering if there is a, a rising awareness in the majority of the Japanese uh, population about the need of, of the change or if there is still a kind of depression or more and more depression about the situation. Yeah. I think increasingly um, the level of awareness or the sense of Urgency uh, increasing in Japan, and the not only NGOs but um, general public are talking about the um, the change as needed. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, because especially in the current administration um, is focusing more on economic performance. Um, mm -hmm. <coughs> So the definition of change is different. It's not our definition towards sustainability, but it's change of still growing economy. But how can we get this, the growing yeah. economy? Yeah, is it, is it yeah, that's okay. kind of things. And I think that this is because this is not because Japanese people are stupid, but this is because uh, we don't have um, persuasive alternatives. So um, what I have been trying to do is to create a small scale but persuasive examples so that you can um, go to the different direction. And the, I'm very impressed, as I said, um, by your government initiative, um, growth in transition, um, recognizing the need for change right, at the national level. And maybe later on, I'd like to learn uh, more about that, um, what motivates them to go that direction. because. Um, this is known for Europe, or yeah. Um, I thank you very much, Yoko. Uh, uh, I'm I'm really uh, I'm, I'm really impressed of, of your talk, and uh, I'm I'm also especially happy that it worked out with this virtual. So we have 14 people here in this room and five people outside, um, and and. Uh, Without asking my own questions, I, I would like to point out that Franz, who is somewhere over the Danube here, here in Vienna, he said we need a, a global Edo corporation. <laughs> Somehow maybe, maybe we can establish that. Uh, we also have uh, Andrea in Carinthia. He, she works with Viserra and she watches us from, from Carinthia. We have Elisabeth from the eastern Tyrol, mm -hmm. uh, which is, I guess, some 300 kilometers from, from here. And she said, uh, let me find that. Um, in German, but I, I try to simultaneously translate. Um, she finds it very interesting, uh, and uh, it uh, strengthens her initiatives and her ideas that she has for Eastern Tyrol, which is a let's say a rural and tourist touristic mm -hmm. uh, region, uh, a very nice but small uh, one here in Austria. And we have Harald in another part of, of Vienna also. also here. To let you know, and if, if some of you maybe after the break uh, uh, want to intervene, we could try. We saw that it worked with France, so it should work also with others. Okay. Well, 10 minutes break, and then mm -hmm. we could start again. Okay. And uh, we would like to talk um, during the next uh, discussion a lot about energy as well, because Yoko has some questions she will both uh, ask and. Uh, so, so now we do the other way around. We do Austria. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.